Naomi from the Wenatchee River Institute. And we hope you're doing well and getting outside this spring. We can't wait until we can visit you at your school again and host you on our campus in Leavenworth. And in the meantime, we are really excited to explore a new topic with you today. And that topic is wildfires. Have you ever noticed the sky turn to a smoky haze in the summer? Or walk through a forest that looked like it had burned? Wildfires are a part of our lives here in Washington State, and they can be started by natural occurrences and by humans. Fires need three things to burn. They need heat, fuel, and oxygen. And these three components are also known as the fire triangle. If one of the three sides of the fire triangle is missing, a fire will not start. So let's explore these three sides of the fire triangle a little more. First, you need something to burn. We call this fuels. And I've got a branch here in my hand and a piece of paper here. Can either of these objects burn? Yes, they can. So these are both fuels. Then you need to produce the heat. I have a lighter here and a lightning bolt here. And when these two are in action, they're both hot, right? Both the lightning bolt and the lighter can produce the heat needed to start the fire. And finally, the third side of the fire triangle is oxygen. And oxygen is in the air all around. So if you need all of these things for a fire to burn, how do you put a fire out? Well, you take away one of the three components of the fire triangle and the fire will go out. Hello, it's Katie Churchwell with the Wenatchee River Institute. Earlier we learned about the fire triangle and the three ingredients necessary in order to ignite a fire. But there are several other variables that influence how quickly a fire can spread through the forest. Today we're going to perform an experiment to see which one of these variables influences the spread of a wildfire the most. All right, so today we're talking about the variables that influence the spread of wildfire. We're going to perform three experiments today to test three different variables. The first one we're going to talk about is slope. So I'm going to draw a picture of a mountain, and each side is going to have a different slope. Of this mountain, which side do you think has the steeper slope? Well, if you said this side, you are correct. One way that we can think about slope is the gradual slope would be the side of the mountain that you'd want to hike up and the steep slope would be the side that you'd want to sled down. Let's perform an experiment to see how slope affects the spread of wildfire. The first thing we're going to do is construct two scientific models out of salt dough. One model will have a gradual slope and the other will have a steep slope. These will represent our mountains. The next thing we need to do is add some trees to our models. These matchsticks that Brandon is adding will represent the trees in our forests. Each model will have 25 trees or matchsticks because this is what's called a constant. A constant is something that does not change throughout the experiment. Because we're only trying to measure this one variable, which in this case is slope, we make sure that our constants don't change so we know that the result is purely because of the variable that we're measuring. It's time to interpret our results. Which side do you think has the most burnt trees? Okay, the next variable that we're going to look at that influences the spread of wildfire is density. Forest density can be seen here in this visual as a dense forest where there's lots of trees growing really closely 
compared to a sparse forest that has fewer trees that are spread apart a little bit more. So let's see how forest density influences the spread of wildfire. Because we're testing forest density in this experiment, one of our models will have 25 trees and the other will have 50. Which side do you think has the most burnt trees? All right, the last variable that we're going to test is moisture. Do wet forests burn faster than dry forests or vice versa? Well, we're gonna find out in this next experiment. For this experiment, we're going to have a wet forest and a dry forest. For the wet one, we're going to soak our trees in some water. Which side has the most burnt trees? To review, from our experiment, we've learned that steep slopes burn faster than gradual slopes. We've learned that dense forests burn faster than sparse forests. And also that dry forests burn faster than wet forests. Yeah, it's true. So we can conclude from our experiments that forests with these variables, wildfires could potentially spread quicker in them. We want to thank you guys today for joining us on these experiments. And remember, don't play with matches. <laughs> Hi scientists, it's Elisa from the Wenatchee River Institute. We already know that plants are amazing. They take in the CO2 that we breathe out and they give us oxygen to breathe in. But another reason why I think they're so amazing is because they have adapted to survive disturbances such as wildfires. A ponderosa pine tree is one that you'll often see in Leavenworth or in Wenatchee near Mission Ridge. It has long needles in groups of three. And as it grows older, the bark looks like a dark orange puzzle. The bark of this tree is very thick, and it does not catch fire or burn easily. The bark protects the inside of the trunk where the living tissues that transport water and nutrients are located. The bark can best protect itself when fires are not too hot and they happen often. Another way that plants have adapted to fire is with serotonous cones. These serotonous cones are thick and glued shut with a strong resin. Locally, these cones are found on the lodgepole pines. The cones will hang on a lodgepole pine for years, long after the seeds in the cone mature. Only when a fire sweeps through, melting the glue like resin, do these cones open up, releasing the seeds. Finally, there are also plants that produce seeds with a tough seed coat that help maintain the seed dormant or in a sleeping stage. A fire's heat can crack that seed coat, allowing the seed to grow. This adaptation is seen with snowbrush. Fire leaves many surviving trees behind, but those trees are now unhealthy. The heat from an intense wildfire can cause fire scars on trees and leave them helpless to diseases, insects, and environmental pressures. Fire also reduces the value of that tree as habitat and a food resource for animals. After the fire passes through a forest, it is now time for the forest to begin the cycle again. Plants that do well without shade and can tolerate disturbances, such as mosses and grasses, are the first to start growing. These are called the pioneer species. Next come the intermediate or middle species, which are shrubs and pines. Finally, the forest reaches a climax community with mature trees. Here are some campfire safety tips for you. Before making a campfire, always make sure to check with the local forest service about restrictions or guidelines. 
When choosing a campfire site, first make sure that there is a water source nearby. And look for a site that has a selection of good sized rocks that you can use to build a fire ring. Often you will get lucky and find an existing ring at popular campsites. It is important that the size of the fire you make matches the size of the fire ring. Do not use wood that is bigger than your ring. Take the time to cut the wood to the appropriate length. Besides the safety, your fire will be significantly less smoky when there are no wood ends sticking out. Before you light the fire, be sure to have a bucket of water and a shovel ready in case you need it. Having a fire is a big responsibility. Never leave your fire unattended. When it is time to extinguish your fire, start by pouring some water on it and mix it around with your shovel. You want to be very sure that there are no hot coals hiding down in there. So pour on the rest of the water and continue mixing it in with the coals. You will know you've done well when the coals are the consistency of soup. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Go for a walk outside. What do you see? Find three living things. This could be plants, animals, or fungi. What is their relationship to fire? If you don't know, try to research this question with your family or your teacher. Write or draw a story that illustrates how the plants, animals, or fungi that you discovered on your walk are connected to fire.